This video is part of our Fundamentals of Nursing Study series. Today, we will discuss the rights of medication administration. Medication administration is a process that carries great responsibility. It requires the nurse to know which medication to administer, as well as to which client and when. Therefore, during medication administration, you should slow down, think for the situation, and always ask if you are unsure. Avoid distractions. Some facilities have a no-interruption zone, where nurses can prepare medications without interruptions. One of the recommendations to reduce medication errors and harm is to use the five rights. These rights are the right patient, the right drug, the right dose, the right rote, and the right time. These rights serve as a guide to preventing medication errors and are the last checkpoint before the medication is administered to the patient. Later in this study session, I will discuss additional rights that will take your critical thinking skills to the next level. Here is a bold statement. If I told you by following the rights of medication administration, you would not be able to and cannot make a medication error. Would you believe me? Yes, this is true. However, if you follow each one of the rights of medication administration, you will not and cannot make a medication error. Now let's get into breaking down the rights of medication administration. Number one, the right patient. This right ensures you are giving medication to the correct patient. You verify the patient with two unique patient identifiers, name and date of birth, or name and medical record number. In most healthcare facilities, your client will have an armband. However, you still need to verify the patient's information. In a busy environment, someone can quickly put the wrong armband on a patient, so always look at the information on the armband and then ask the patient or family to verify. On the other hand, in the pediatric population, we can ask the parent to verify the information. Number 2. The right drug. You must verify that you have the right drug as ordered by the healthcare provider and in the correct formulation. You must check three times when administering medication, so always check the printed name on the order when pulling it from the medication room and compare it to the medication administration. Then, once you are back at the bedside, you will recheck the medication to ensure you have the right one. There are a lot of meds that look alike and others that sound alike, for example, Aricept and SFX, Benadryl and Benazprol. As an added layer of protection, most healthcare facilities scan the medications just like they do the patient's armbands. In addition to the right drug, ensure the formulation matches what the healthcare provider ordered. For example, nifedipine is a calcium channel blocker used for hypertension. It is available as an immediate release and a 24-hour extended release formulation. If the extended release tablet formulation is what the provider ordered, ensure you get the extended release tablet. Number 3. The right dose. So you have the proper medication, the right patient, but are you giving the correct dose? You want to check that you are giving the prescribed dose. You want to ensure the dosage is appropriate for that medication and the patient. Here is a pro tip. I want you to stop, take a moment, and double check if you are giving more than two tablets or opening multiple vials at any time. Think to yourself, do I have the proper dose? Did I calculate the dosage correctly? Then, ask another nurse to check your math or call the pharmacy for a consultation. There may be occasions where you will have to give a patient three or four tablets of the same medication. Therefore, always be alert whenever you give multiple pills or use multiple vials. Number four, the right route. So you have the proper medication, the correct patient, and the correct dose. Are you getting the medication by the right route? The route of the medication impacts how much of the drug gets to the site of action. Therefore, you must check the order from the healthcare provider for the medication route. The route can be oral, intravenously, subcutaneously, or intramuscularly. For example, regular insulin can be given subcutaneous or intravenous. Therefore, always check the medication order for the route. Another pro tip. As a safety precaution, oral medications come in syringes. These syringes cannot connect to an intravenous line. Suppose you find yourself using excessive strength to put anything together to give any medication. First, I want you to step back and ask yourself if you're doing the right thing. If unsure, ask another nurse or your charge nurse for help. As a word of caution, enteral feedings cannot fit intravenous tubing because the intravenous tubing cannot work on an enteral pump. In addition, they are not interchangeable. Unfortunately, in 2001 a nurse administered 200 milliliters of enteral feeding intravenously to a patient who was supposed to receive a 3-in-1 TPN solution. The patient expired four days later. I will link the article to this situation below for you to read. 
Number 5. The Right Time So you've got the proper medication, the right patient, the right dose, and the correct route. Are you giving it at the right time? The timing of medication is critical because you are medicating multiple patients at different times. It becomes complex to keep everything on time, but you need to give the medication on time to keep it safe for the patient. It is exceptionally critical to provide some medications when the healthcare provider orders. Two examples are insulin and pain medication. Each healthcare facility will have a window surrounding that scheduled time to administer the medication safely. For example, if your facility has a one-hour window, if a scheduled med is due at 10 a.m., you can give it any time from the hour before to the hour after. The administration time would range from 9-1 a.m. to 10:59 a.m. to give the scheduled medication. However, this does not apply to PRN medications. PRN medications are more inflexible, and an hour before or after the window is irrelevant. For example, suppose you must administer a PRN pain medication every six hours. In that case, it must be at least six hours before you can give another dose of the pain medication. Additionally, some medications must be administered before meals, after meals, or bedtime to be effective. Earlier, I mentioned some additional rights to the five that are helpful. Let's discuss these other rights. Again, these rights are going to vary between nursing programs and hospitals. The right documentation. You want to document that you administered the medication and any associated data in the medication administration record. You should also document if the patient had or did not have any signs or symptoms of any side effects or adverse effects. The right assessment. All medications require an assessment before medication administration to ensure the patient receives the proper medication for the right reason. In addition, you should assess the patient's history for drug reactions and allergies. It would be best if you also recognized when a medication should not be given and get additional clarification from the healthcare provider. The right evaluation. You want to assess your patients and see how they respond to the medication, especially for new medicines, pain medications, and insulin. For example, if you're giving your patient an antihypertensive medication for a blood pressure of 176-106, ensure that you have the initial blood pressure documented and then the patient's response to that medication. If the blood pressure is still high, you know that this blood pressure will need additional intervention. If the blood pressure, if the blood pressure has decreased, then we have the expected response. On the other hand, if you give medication for pain 8 out of 10, you will want to go back and check if the drug has been effective in relieving the pain. The right to refuse. Patients have the right to refuse treatment, including medications. A. If your patient refuses their medication, try to get to the bottom of the reason for the refusal. You can educate them on the medicine's benefits and the reason for the side effect they may experience. However, if your patient continues to refuse the medication, document the patient's refusal and notify the healthcare provider. The right to patient education. Patient education is a nursing best practice for any situation, not just medication administration. However, you should continually educate the patient on the medication you are giving them and be able to answer any questions they may have. Let's discuss a few more safety tips for medication administration. Number one, only administer a medication that you prepared yourself. Number two, never administer additional or missed doses unless the healthcare provider orders. Number three, ensure the medication you are going to administer has not expired. Number four, if a patient questions or expresses concern about a medication, stop and do not administer it. Instead, explore the patient's concerns, review the physician's order, and, if necessary, notify the practitioner in charge of the patient. And lastly, the most important thing you can do when giving your patient's medication is to use the rights of medication administration. You can reduce errors and keep the patient safe. Thank you for watching this video. Please look at the other videos in our Fundamentals of Nursing Study series.